Now in the last section on vibration and rotation interaction, we're going to talk about what's known as the centrifugal distortion term in pure rotational spectra. And the centrifugal force is maybe simplest to describe if you imagine holding onto a piece of string and then having that piece of string have some sort of a weight attached to it and you are and swinging this thing around. Okay, so the the act of this rotation, the fact that this object here at the end is always feeling some acceleration around the curve in order to keep it attached to the string, that uh, that is a force that ends up looking like a force that is acting on this object that is pushing outwards, right? And so you can think of it as whoever's holding on to this has to pull this way, and therefore this object here must feel an opposite force out that way. Uh, there's also a really great depiction of it in this XKCD comic here, which is the world's best webcomic, as we all naturally know. Okay, so if we if we imagine our N two molecule as being something connected or two atoms connected by some sort of a spring, uh, and this thing is rotating so quickly that there is an effective force pushing outwards. Right, so we imagine that once this thing is spinning so much, there's a centrifugal force that pushes the atoms outward. And we know that because, okay, so let's think about the rotational constant, which is 1 over 2i times h bar squared. Okay, and this is equal to h bar squared over 2 mu l squared. So we just, just, uh, just input mu l squared for the moment of inertia here. Right, so if there's if this thing starts rotating really quickly, if the nitrogen starts rotating so quickly that there's effectively an extra force pushing these things out, then the nitrogen atoms will get slightly further apart, which will slightly lengthen L, which will give an apparently slightly smaller B. And so what this means is that the centrifugal distortion term will effectively slightly lower the apparent energy of higher angular momentum states. And what this ends up looking like, at least to a first approximation, the energy of the, of the rotational Hamiltonian then changes to be E of J is equal to B tilde J times J plus 1 minus, and then normally this is given the symbol D tilde, and this is j squared times j plus 1 squared. Okay, here this d is called the centrifugal distortion constant. And it tends to be quite small because the centrifugal distortion term actually tends to have a pretty minor effect on the pure rotational line spacing. Okay, as an example, for HCl, which we'll take a look at the data in a second, the ratio of D to B, remember, so if you look at this equation, they're both multiplied by integers, and the whole thing ends up being an energy, which means that they both have units of energy, or they should have the same units, and so you can directly compare them like this. So this D divided by B tilde ends up being approximately 10 to the minus 5. So for low-lying states, that means that this term on the right-hand side is, is around 100,000 times weaker than this. And so it's not going to have play a large effect up until you start to get into pretty large values of J. Okay, so this is showing, this is showcasing actual data for the for HCL, the example we have here. And what you're seeing on the left are the perfectly rigid rotator energy levels. And on the right here is what happens after you start to include the centrifugal distortion. And what you see is that this ends up, so for the low-lying states, there really is little to no difference. And for state zero, there should actually be no difference. But as you get higher and higher in energy, then there is a larger and larger downshift in the actual energy. 
And so this will cause the neighboring energy levels in the rotational spectrum to be slightly closer together than they normally would be. But again, it's a very slight effect. Okay, and that is the last correction that we're going to talk about to the vibration and rotation spectrum. In the final section on angular momentum and rotational spectroscopy, we'll talk about what the solutions to the rotational Hamiltonian look like. And these are very special solutions that will, that will come up again in the class that are called spherical harmonics. So the next class, in the next lecture, we will talk about spherical harmonics.